Hello everyone, in this video we are going to start creating our Fruit Ninja game by creating its game states. In this course, I will assume you are familiar with phaser concepts such as states, sprites and prefabs, so we will not explain them. Also, I will assume you are familiar with JavaScript programming. In our Fruit Ninja game, we will have three states to load the game level, which will be stored in a JSON file, like this one. The JSON file will have the level assets, the level groups, and the level prefabs. To load the level, we are going to use three states, as you can see in our main file. So we will have the boot state, which will load the JSON file and parse it, the loading state, which will load the level assets described in the file, and the level state, which will actually run the game. The boot state and loading state are common structures that you may be familiar with, so I will only show their code instead of writing it now. This way we can focus on the level state, which is the most important here. The boot state is initialized with the JSON, JSON level file, so it saves, it saves it. Then it loads the JSON text in the preload method and parses it in the create method. After the level data is parsed, it calls loading state. The loading state is responsible for loading all the assets, so in the preload method, it iterates through all assets, loading the correct asset according to its type. So here it checks for the type. For example, if it's an image, it calls this.load.image with the asset key and the asset source. Notice that those parameters are defined in the JSON level file. For example, the particle image has its type, which is an image, its source, which is the particle.png file, and the key is the name particle image. Now let's create the level state. In the initialization, it saves the level data, set up the scale, and the physics system. Now the create method is the one that actually creates the game prefabs. It starts by creating the groups. So it starts empty and then we iterate through all groups on the level data. And for each one we create a new group and add it to the groups list. Now we are going to create the prefabs, so it starts empty as well. We iterate through all prefabs in the level data. On property, prefab name. And we will call a different method called create prefab. This method will receive the prefab name and its data and will create a new prefab. Now let's write the create prefab method. To instantiate the correct prefab from its type, we are going to add to level state a property that maps each prefab type to its constructor. This property is called prefab classes and for example, it maps the background type to the constructor of the prefab, prefab class. So now we can create the prefab method using this prefab classes property. So first we check if the prefab classes has the prefab type we want to create. Then the create prefab method can check if prefab type exists and if so, instantiate it. However, there will be two options of setting the position of a prefab with an absolute value or with as a percentage of the word dimensions. So, in order just to calculate the prefab position, we have to check which one of those we have to use. So, first we will check if the position should be a percentage or an absolute value.
If the position is less than 1, we assume it's a percentage. So, the preferred position will be a new point. relative to the game dimensions. If it's an absolute value, the preferred position is simply the position in the data. Now that we have the correct position, we can create the new preferred by calling the constructor defining in prefab, prefab classes. Prefab data type. The constructor receives the game state, the prefab name, the prefab position, and any other properties, which will be defined in the JSON file. I didn't show you yet the prefab class, so we're going to do it now. The generic prefab class has only the constructor and will create its sprite, add itself to, the, to the, its group, save the game state, save its name, and set any other properties like the frame or custom properties. Also, it will add itself to the prefabs list in the game state. All the prefabs in our game can extend this class, adding new functionalities. Now, to finish this video, we are going to add a background prefab. First, we have to add a group to it, so let's create a background group. And now, we will create the background prefab. It, its type will be background. The position will be 0 for x and 0 for y. the properties. Here in the properties we have to define at least the texture, which, which means the asset we are going to use, and the group. So the texture will be the background image and the group will be background. We can define other custom properties here, but we don't need them for the background. So now, if you run our game, it will show the background here. It's working. So, to summarize, we save our game data in a JSON file, which is loaded by boot state. Then, the loading state loads all assets before the game starts. Finally, level state creates the groups and prefabs, actually running the game. We also create a generic prefab class, so all game prefabs can extend. And that's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye.